Welcome to Split Ends and Friends podcast. This podcast isn't just about hair, makeup, fashion, and how to be successful in this industry. We will talk about all that, but it's much more. It's about how hairstyles are changing the world. We're bringing communities together and making a difference. We're spreading kindness around like confetti. Hosted by Trisha Rivas, owner of Trixie's Salon and founder of the nonprofit Dreamcatchers Foundation Inc., and co hosted by Hannah Arendt, social media guru, hairstylist at Trixie's, and director of education. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Split Ends and Friends. Hello. It feels like we haven't been here in a while for some reason. I I guess we haven't. (laughs) We've been really busy. Yeah. Especially Trisha. I mean, she's always busy than me. (laughs) Stop it. But we're building a a new salon. Yes, we are. doing that. Oh, yeah. It's, oh my gosh, we're so excited. Yeah. Uh, So excited. Yeah. So we also, speaking of... I guess she is a hairstylist or yes. was a hairstylist. Yes, yes, yes. That was a bad um, kind of segue, but <laughs> this is, we have a friend of ours on that we're really excited to introduce to all of you. And one of the main reasons, or one of the first reasons, I guess, when Trisha told me that, you know, about what she was doing was she has a special connection with us because she does, is a hairstylist. Oh my and gosh. it's a, yes. obviously you know, with our podcast, we like to feature a lot of different people that, but to have someone who has a little bit of that, like, history is kind of fun. It and is. I feel like we'll have a lot to talk about. So, um, Wendy works with business women who are overwhelmed with all the hats they wear. She helps them focus their attention on what matters most. So, she's a mindset coach and the founder of uh, Empowered Life Coaching. So, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to thank both of you. I love listening to your podcast, and I think it's so awesome that you celebrate other people and what they're doing, other businesses. I, I, it just is so amazing, and I love it. I'm so excited about the new salon. Yes, 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 thank yes. You, especially <laughs> since it has the word in it that I love and power. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh yes. The John Stoddard and Power Salon and all that good yeah. stuff. I do have to put in a special plug though, because Wendy has been a dear, dear friend of mine. And, um, you know, it's one of those things you, life gets busy and you lose connection. And then, you know, I'm not going to lie. I have a tendency to stay more connected through social media sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I know Wendy had taken a break from uh, social media. So we reconnected probably about eight or nine months ago. Was it Wendy? Sounds right. Yep. Yeah. And we're sitting in um, Friedrichs and we're talking and I had a moment about the business. I'm not kidding you, Hannah. Like, I mean, just tears flowing down my face. It was just, I I just needed a a good release. And so um, that day I said to Wendy, I said, Hey, would you feel odd about coaching me? She's like, no, not at all. She's like, let's just think about it a little bit. And I got in the car and I sent her a text right away. And I'm like, listen, um, I know of anybody, you're going to call me out on my, you know, my shit when it needs to, when I need, you know, need to get out of my own way. So um, I, I am been nothing but pleased with working with Wendy over the past eight to nine months. So she That's is amazing. my personal life coach. Even the coach needs a coach. Oh yeah. <laughs> You got that right. And I would like to re- preface that by saying I lovingly call people out on their stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Lovingly. Yes. Well, <laughs> my, my first time of, um, I, we met you before because Trisha had introduced us to you when you were more like doing hair, but yeah. then she brought her in for one of our salon summits. And I mean, within like one minute, I think I was crying. Yes. <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, and Wendy, you're not afraid to share your story and your vulnerabilities also. And I know that makes people have a connection to you. And of course, we have a connection to you because as hairstylists, we are a whole different breed. (laughs) Oh, gosh, you know. And, you know, you mentioned that I retired from hair, but I, I will always, even though I'm not behind the chair anymore, I will always and forever be a hairstylist. It's embedded in who I am. Like, I did it for 24 years. And 
what was so incredible about the gift of hairstyling is, you know, I got to help people feel good on the outside. But as you know, it's more to it than just that. I really found that I felt drawn to help people feel good on the inside as well. So it was so great to have that time with each person and just try to shine a little light in their life. And, and I really missed that part of the job, just that mm -hmm. constant connection with people. Um, you know, people tell hairstylists everything. I mean, there were times that I was the first one to find out about a cancer diagnosis. I hadn't told anybody yet. Or I, sometimes I was the first one to find out about a pregnancy, a divorce. Um, I mean, people tell hairstylists more sometimes than their therapists because we are in that zone of trust and we're actually physically touching people. Mm -hmm. And so there's this natural inclination to allow us in and, and it's, it's a gift. And I, I really want hairstylists to understand the importance of it and to respect that, that trust that people give us and um, to learn how, you know, we're not really taught that in cosmetology school that people are going to do that. Yeah. No, so not it can kind of be overwhelming. Like mm -hmm. I know in the beginning of my career, I would just take on all of that stuff that people would bring to me and I didn't know how to process it. So I really feel strongly about trying to help hairstylists understand you can be a hundred percent committed to your client when they're in your chair and empathize them, but you have to have zero attachment to the outcome after they leave because that's where your time ends. And that's where it's, you know, it's their job to fix their hair in a way that looks good. It's their job to um, handle their problems. But for that time that they're in our chair, that is our time to give. But we need to understand that once that time is over, we need to step back into ourselves and not try to carry everyone's burdens with us. Yeah. Well, Wendy, I think you do a, um, just a beautiful job on that in helping us set healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, one thing that you've said to me many times is that, Trisha, not setting boundaries is unkind. And it's true. It, it, yeah. when, you, when you really stop to think about it, it is unkind. Um, because, you know, you're giving these unrealistic expectations to people and to yourself. So, yeah. um, you know, again, well, your stylists are a whole different breed. And I love the fact that you you know, being a hairdresser, I don't even like to use the word retired because once you're a hairdresser, you're always a hairdresser. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure. but you, I'm actively retired. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you definitely have a personal connection to us, which I absolutely, absolutely love. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to talk about some of the really cool things that, uh, you have planned for 2020, but we definitely can't wait to have you back into the salon and, and share all the goodness that that you have uh, have going on. Awesome! I love sharing goodness. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and another thing too that I absolutely love um, within your practice is you're not afraid to to talk about your faith. Yep. So uh, why don't you talk a little bit about you know how you combine the two? but do it comfortably mm -hmm. for, for people, you know, because sometimes it, it can be uncomfortable, but you do not come off across like that whatsoever. Well, I mean, I have to start just by saying that, you know, while today I am just full of joy and gratitude and I feel like I've truly found my purpose mm -hmm. and my faith has grown, it hasn't always been this way. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I were to look at my life today, I would have a hard time believing it's mine because at one time it, it was the complete opposite. Yeah. And so again, I, I, I share my story not to try to have sympathy or be like, Oh, poor me, this happened to me. I share it because all of us have crap that happens and it's something we don't have control over, but, our personal power lies in what we do when it happens. And so I would say my lowest point, I was doing what most hairstylists do, sadly. I was working myself to death. I would have days that I would come home and I would tell my husband, uh, I don't think I slept, or sorry, I don't think I peed or ate today. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I had back to back to back to back clients. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, the first half of my career, I was an employee. I worked for someone else and else. And the second half, I ran my own, I rented a chair, I had my own studio. And so I, you know, it was just me. Mm -hmm. And I was like the hardest boss I've ever had because I didn't give myself (laughs) a break. I didn't set boundaries. You know, like Mm -hmm. I love working for myself, which I'm doing now, but sometimes if you have someone else saying, Hey, it's time for you to go home, Mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't have when I worked for someone else, I didn't have to worry about taxes and marketing and all of those things. And so I needed that time freedom uh, with my family, but uh, man, it, it was hard to take all that on. So I was super stressed. I had money stress. I was overwhelmed. And when you own your own business, so this doesn't just apply to hairstylists. This is anybody who owns their own business. Like you feel like you constantly have to be hustling and we almost start to create this hustle as like a badge of honor. Like, look at me, I'm so busy. I'm doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. what started happening is I wasn't running my business. My business was running me. And I I literally, my, my health just came to a screeching halt. I was, uh, it was October of, tw- or sorry, summer of 2017. We were headed on a family vacation. And so since I worked for myself, whenever I gave myself a, the rare vacation, I had to work a ton before and a ton after. So it never felt mm-hmm. like a vacation. So a couple of days before we left, I was just working like a dog, trying to get everybody in before I left. And I started having this pain in my back. And of course, I thought, well, I'm a hairstylist. All hairstylists have a pain in their back, right? (laughs) (laughs) And so I did what most women do. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm not going to pay attention to what my body's trying to tell me. Like, why would I do that? Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) it just kept progressing. And and it got to the point where it was waking me up in the middle of the night. Mm. And there was no kind of rolling or stretching that made it go away. And finally... Um, I mean, it just kept getting worse and worse. And then uh, we had spent the day on the lake. We were in Branson. So, you know, you're in a wet swimsuit all day. I come home and I take my swimsuit off and I see this really funky rash on my left side, on my abdomen. And it was even starting to kind of wrap around to my back. And I thought again, oh, huh, I was in a wet swimsuit all day. It's just a rash or there was something funky in the lake water. You know, I, I tried to ignore it. And then the next, that same night, I guess it was, that night I sat up in bed and I, it is a pain that I have never experienced. And I have had a baby without drugs. So <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> and I, I just, it just kept getting worse and worse. And I kept describing it to my mother-in-law as like a hot prickly pain. And I just was exasperated. I mean, there was a part of me that one night I I almost just drove myself to the emergency room. I didn't know what to do. And so I thought maybe since I had that pain in my back that I had the kidney stone. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we had actually gone to this place in Branson called the Sight and Sound Theater. And it's like a theatrical, they do Bible stories in this theatrical way that's just absolutely incredible. So we had gone to the one about Moses. And so that night when I was woken up again in that pain, I was like, Lord, what is happening to me? Like help. I mean, it was just this like primal cry for help. And so I finally was able to sleep. And that morning, I, I swear to you, a voice said, search prickly pain. And I pulled up my iPad and I typed in hot prickly pain and all these images showed up of what my abdomen looked like. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. And I look down and it says shingles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man. Huh. What do you know? Well, at the ripe old age of 43, (laughs) when you get shingles, it's because of stress. Yeah. You know, a lot of older people get stressed because they have a lot of other health. But when you're 43 and you get shingles, it's from stress. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it was like a kick in the butt. Like, girl, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. what are you doing and so here I thought that being busy and hustling and just trying to be a super mom and trying to be a business owner that that was the answer it it literally knocked me on my butt for seven weeks 
I was no good to my family. I had to rely on pain meds to work, get through work because I couldn't not work. Yeah. And it was kind of like God was trying to tell me to slow down. And of course I didn't listen because I'm known to be stubborn. <laughs> and and nah, finally you. it was like, <laughs> yeah. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to make your butt stay in bed. And mm -hmm. it was from that point that I'm like, I got to do something different. And you know, I just recently shared this with my family because I want to talk about it publicly, but I really developed a, a relationship to those pain meds that became pretty unhealthy. Yeah. Um, it, and really my, my history with any kind of vice, I, alcohol and drugs have never had a grip on me. My drug of choice is food. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so the fact that, that a drug was like, starting to control me mm -hmm. and change me like I I lost a sense of who I was I just was like what's happening and and it was seven weeks in and I thought I don't know how much longer I can keep this up trying to go to work put on a happy face be there for clients be there for my family and I just I hit a wall and I I remember I was going to bed and I just looked up and I'm like you know I'm tapping out like I, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I'll probably be okay with that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I wake up the next day and I'm like, well, I had a weird dream. I had a dream that I said, I didn't care if I, you know, didn't wake up. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. this dread just came over me and I'm like, whoa, I actually said that. Yeah. And in that moment, the sassy part of me was like, oh <laughs> no way. <laughs> not having it. Like yeah. this is bull crap. Like not having it. And I just looked up and I'm like, hey, if this is, I'm going to be in pain for a while, that's fine, but I, I'm not having it. And I immediately uh, stopped taking the pain meds, which in retrospect, you're supposed to wean yourself, but I stopped taking it and I just accepted what was happening. And I decided right then and there that I wasn't going to be a victim of it anymore. Yeah. And um, the pain was gone the next day. Wow. And is, is that when you decided at that moment too, that you were really going to step into that light of wanting to be a coach full time? I'm telling you that path was lit from that day. And yeah. It still is today. Like unbelievable. It was one of my hair clients who said, Wendy, you should, you should check into health coaching and life coaching. Mm -hmm. I think that you would be really good at that. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. And all roads just led to the training and the amazing thing I was thinking this morning about I remember when I was in cosmetology school and when I finished I'm like you know I would say if anything what I got out of cosmetology school is I learned how to take better care of my own hair right <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm like oh I didn't know this about this and I didn't yeah. know I've really been you know damaging my hair so with coaching as we are learning we coach each other Mm -hmm. We practice with each other. So in the process of all the certifications I went through, I was getting coached and mm -hmm. I was seeing yeah. what it was like to be coached. And so my life has changed and transformed because of coaching. Mm -hmm. So I 120% believe in it because it's changed my life. Yeah. And, you know, add coaching plus my faith growing. And it's like, wow. You know, anything is possible. Oh my goodness, yes. And I love, Wendy, that you have, I guess, is there, in coaching, is there a niche, you know, and yours being that you want to work with, you know, small businesses, but especially hairdressers, because, you know, you and I have had many talks, and the part that we miss out on as hairdressers is the wellness part, even that financial part. And, you know, with our talks, that's definitely something that we want to lift our industry up to a different standard and know that it's okay for us to be taking care of ourselves. We have to, or we are no good to anybody. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your business, yes. your family, your yep. clients, and not taking care of yourself is selfish because yes. then you're giving like the C and D version of yourself to other people. And I don't. Mm -hmm. That's not fair to them. They should get my A game. Now, can we be on A game all the time? No. Yeah. But to me, once start things going, things start going south, 
that's kind of like a speed bump, like, hey, you know, kind of a warning sign, like something's going on here. That's when we need to just kind of be still and be like, all right, what's going on? Yeah. What am I, what do I need to let go of? You know? And so what I love about coaching is I get to just meet people where they're at. Zero judgment. Just start getting curious, like meet them where they're at and really dream big. Like where is it you would rather be? Mm-hmm. And then to kind of help bridge that gap between those two things. Yeah. So a lot, it's very forward focused. It's very future focused and how you want to feel. You know, we get so focused on, on the wrong thing. We, we're focused on how we're unhappy and I don't have this and I don't have this. Well, if you only focus on that, then that's all you're going to see. And so being excited about the future and just daily, hourly having gratitude for what you already have it's not an easy practice to do because Mm -hmm. the world tells us we're supposed to want more, you know, a better body, better hair, better marriage, better this, you know, Oh, there's always better. You got to keep chasing the better, but Mm -hmm. it all starts with yourself. And that's the part I realized I was missing is that I didn't fully love and truly respect myself. And I was treating myself poorly. And man, if you don't, fix that it's it's hard hard. (laughs) it is oh my goodness it most definitely is 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 a hairdresser as Hannah and I a hairdresser and yourself what is one thing that we can immediately work on is is a hair is a hairdresser you know as far as with wellness what is something we can immediately work on Well, the first thing that popped to my head is to immediately think, why did I choose this profession? Because I feel like for most of us, and I know it was for myself, it was a calling. So really reconnecting with why you started in the first place, reconnect with what you love about it and connecting with what gifts you have as a stylist. You know, I, um, I was really good with color. And so I really focused on color because that was a strength. And then I figured out what my weaknesses are. And those, that's when I took classes. I made sure I took classes and asked for help in those areas that were weak. So it's the same thing with your wellness. Like, what are you, what are your strengths? Are you good about going to the gym? Are you good about eating healthy? Like finding the strengths that you have in wellness and really focusing on that. But the areas that you're weak, that's where you need to seek out help and guidance. And, and really coaching is just about accountability and um, support because mm-hmm. when you know someone's going to be asking you, you're more likely to do it. Mm-hmm. So I would say as a hairstylist, just really knowing and understanding and not coming from a place of fear that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't do your job. You need to come from a place of love and respect for yourself that I want to take care of myself so I can do this job that I was called to do and help the people that I'm here to help. Mm -hmm. And when you love yourself, you want to take care of yourself. You want to eat better. You want to move your body. And so, again, I think the world's view of what women are supposed to be doing and looking like and (sighs) is ridiculous, you know you have social media and everybody looking at some of these celebrity moms. Well, you know, they have help behind the scenes. They have means that the average woman doesn't have. So Mm -hmm. we're comparing ourselves to something that is not even fair. Yeah. So as I mean, not just hairstylists, but everybody, if you are not feeding your body proper nutrition, vitamins and minerals, how can you expect your body to function the way it's supposed to? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just really, life is simple, but not easy. Yeah. Eat healthy food, eat foods that God put on this planet, you know, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, you know, it's not that hard to figure out what, if it's got 20 ingredients on the package, you probably shouldn't eat it, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm just, so, I'm just thinking, too. Stylist, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking, Hannah. Um, at least when I started doing hair or maybe you too, Wendy, like my diet was Mountain Dew, Mm -hmm. junk food, 
and cigarettes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my God. In cosmetology I, school, I was on a steady diet of not yes. doing Cheetos. <laughs> yes. And it's like, oh my gosh, of mm -hmm. course we yeah. would feel like crap, you know? Now, I did not smoke a lot, but on the really, you know, days that I had like 16 perms that I would smoke. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember, I'll never forget this. One day in cosmetology school, you know, there was a group of people that would go out and smoke. And I was having a really stressful day. I think I had to do a spiral perm on someone that had hair down to their butt. And I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. I can't do this. <laughs> so I was so stressed. And there were a group of people out smoking. And I came out there and I like grabbed a cigarette from somebody. <laughs> they were like, Wendy, I didn't know you smoke. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I am today. Oh, so, yeah. my I love you know, it. And then at night, you know, hairstylists like to whoop it up. So then I was drinking too much. And so oh, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what it's, it's just in it. And again, it's not from a place of judgment. But if you aren't moving your body, getting blood flow to your brain, getting oxygen to your muscles, and if you're not eating healthy, nutritious food, you can't really be mad and upset that you feel like crap. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just personal responsibility. But to me, personal responsibility comes after loving yourself. Like you want yeah. to take care of things that you love. Mm -hmm. So hairstylists, like plan ahead, make sure you have healthy snacks. I mean, unfortunately, we don't really have quote unquote lunch hours. Mm -hmm. We should, but we don't. Mm -hmm. So having healthy snacks, having something, you know, meat sticks, fruit, uh, nuts, like stuff that we can just grab and make sure that we're eating. Now, that's not ideal because you really should be in a peaceful, sitting down posture when you eat. Because if you're too stressed when you eat, it's not really going to, it's going to kind of go through you faster. It's not going to digest properly. But not eating is not good either. So, um, and also just stretching. You know, if you get a chance in between clients, instead of going out to smoke, like, pull um like the heart opener in yoga where you pull your arms back like you're like you're just trying to get the biggest hug you can get your arms are out as far as they can because we're in all day yeah. we're collapsed in we're collapsed forward so even just standing and pulling your arms open as wide as you can and looking up like I'm doing that right now and it's like my body's like whoa that's a weird sensation I don't do that yeah um so stretching in between clients, <laughs> getting outside, getting a breath of air. Um, if that person was going through, through something tough and you talk them through it, like going outside and just letting it go, you know, you think about them, you pray for them, but you just got to let it go. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to go on this special diet and do like a six day a week boot camp. <laughs> right you know and that's my that's something that I'm I'm a recovering perfectionist so I thought okay if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do paleo and I'm gonna work out six days a week and it, I just set myself up for failure every time yeah yeah and so day by day I'm gonna eat I'm gonna choose to eat healthy stuff today and I'm gonna get out and move my body and whatever that looks like I love riding my bike I love playing tennis uh, you know, doing stuff that you enjoy. I'm not going to get on a treadmill ever again. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced, and sorry if people like treadmills, but I'm convinced that hell is lined with treadmills. Like, <laughs> not doing it. Not doing it. Oh my God. It's like a road to nowhere. I'd rather get out and walk and see that I made progress. Yeah. 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 And I realize sometimes we are in Iowa. Sometimes you can't walk outside. So. Yeah. Oh I just think we try to make things too hard mm -hmm. and then we could, so we can say, Oh, well, it's really hard. So, you know, it makes sense that I'm not doing it. So it's like, we give ourselves a, a backdoor easy way out. Like just make it simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And make it something that you enjoy. It has to be something you enjoy. I do not enjoy, um, beets. I don't care what they do for me. I don't care what vitamin is in there. I am not going to eat them. I'm just not going to. <laughs> but I do, I do like kale and spinach. So I try to eat more of that. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. don't try to force, quote unquote, you know, certain foods that are healthy for you on yourself if you don't like them. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's no fun. No, no. I was thinking this morning too about in our new space that we're expanding at Uptown, how nice it would have been to have an oven. <laughs> oh my God. And right. it was really sweet. And then I was yeah. like, gosh, but then I think we have to have a grease trap and you know, all that stuff. But definitely in 2020, we're thinking about different ways to adding in wellness at Trixie's. You know, at our yeah. new space, we're going to have a little corner with like this um, egg shaped chair. And um, I'm putting up a, uh, like a, a rope swing and, you know, so just some stuff to have in the corner that will be um, relaxing and our staff or even our guests can go in there and just unwind for even yeah. 15, you know, yeah. even 15 minutes. That's amazing. Serving. Yeah. The it, number one I'm thing you can do is, yeah, the number one thing you can do is do everything you can to release stress. Number yes. one. Yes, yes, because yes. Because if you are stressed, your body doesn't digest food properly. Yep. Your, I mean, every, your whole system doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So again, let's make it simple. Eat fruits and vegetables. Those of us who eat meat, eat good quality meats. Just eat what God put on the planet. Mm -hmm. Take time to meditate, rest, pray, stretch, you know, whatever it is you do. but we need and now more than ever we need quiet time people are on their phones all the time and they're constantly stimulated that's why there's more anxiousness yeah um because yeah. no one is taking a time to truly unplug yeah. i mean before this call i sat out on my deck i mean i would did not get the memo that it's winter time the birds are chirping i sat out on my deck and i just basked in the sun and closed my eyes and felt the wind the breeze I did that for four minutes. That's mm -hmm. it. Four minutes. And I was just like, oh, I can breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Wendy, with, if people are thinking about getting into coaching with, with you, where, where do we find you? So I, when I first got a website, I didn't think this one through and it was really long. Empoweredlifehealthcoach.com. I don't even like typing that. It's too long. <laughs> so I actually bought the domain wendyfrederigel.com. Um, oh, that's that awesome. Awesome. okay. Yeah. So that just takes you to the empoweredlifehealthcoach.com, but yeah. then you don't have to. That's um, great. And but on the flip can, side, you know, like I such a such so cool. You've got your own <laughs> name on your website. Yeah. Isn't that so cool? Trisha Revis. <laughs> yes. Check it out. It's probably available. But, you know, <laughs> the, I love it. The flip side is I spell Wendy with an I at the end and Frederick Gill is a name that no one ever spells right. So <laughs> yes. I have a hard time finding me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's true though, Wendy. You've said yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm on Facebook. I have an Empowered Life on Facebook. I also have Instagram at Coach Wendy. Um, I'm sure if you just Google me, it, sh it should pop up. I, I need to meet with your guru, Trisha, about SEOs and all that good stuff. But at this point, <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to be creating a private Facebook group on my Empowered Life page. I just really want to have a, a safe place where people like-minded people can come. I'm going to do a, start a weekly live show on Sunday nights just to kind of settle in and mm -hmm. think about the week ahead. I just really want to create a safe space for people to come, be inspired, share struggles. Uh, that's going to be the place where I'll talk about events and things that are doing. I know I'm super excited about creating a, specific program for hairstylists. Yes. Um, just something that will be quick and easy for them to, to get and watch on their break or in between clients. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that modules are short. Mm -hmm. um, but just to really elevate our industry and for people to know that you are a businesswoman if you're a hairstylist. Yeah. You know, you are it, it, it truly is in my eyes, a divine calling and we have a huge impact. And so again, I just want to thank you, Trisha and Trixie's for the impact that you have on our community. Like you aren't just doing hair, you know, you're touching lives, you're shining your light in Des Moines. And I'm just so proud of you and what you've created. Oh my awesome. goodness. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, and I do, I, 
Yes, and sincerely, thank you, thank you so much for that, um, for that recognition. But as you know, I definitely don't do it by myself. And I teasingly say to people that, you know, I'm that person that'll email Hannah at two o'clock in the morning with an idea. <laughs> I, I know if she opens it up in the morning, she's like, oh my <laughs> God. Why are you up at 2 a.m.? <laughs> Why are you up at 2 a.m., Trisha? <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm not going to lie. She, <laughs> Hannah is the one that um, definitely helps me with uh, getting my ideas into motion. <laughs> I know. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'll start on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I have a little journal with me all the time because I'll have ideas pop at me in the weirdest times. And so I just yes. always have that with me so I can get it out of my head onto paper. Oh, yeah. 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 I've started doing that. I was yes. found I was so, I mean, I, I'm just anxious all the time. And so someone was like, uh, somewhat Emily Williams that we work with, yeah. she was like, just write it all down. Don't yes. make it look pretty. Yep. Don't try to get the right matching colored pens to the like mm -hmm. notebook that I would be trying to do. Yeah. Just okay. write it all down. And it's been so great. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think anybody who struggles with anxiety, like brain dumping is super important. And that's yeah. literally just getting out all of it out on your head and writing on paper. Even if you can't read it, even if it doesn't make sense, you have to pull it out of your head and pull it out of your body and put it on paper. And what I find interesting is even a day or two later, I'll read through it and I'll be like, oh, well, geez, that was kind of blown a little. I think I embellished a little bit there. Like, exactly, right? <laughs> so I'll be know, like, I have all these things to do. And then I'll look at it and I was like, well, I can do, like, that, that's just, I'll do it right now, you oh know? Oh my gosh, I've always yeah. loved to journal and I keep my journals. And when we moved, I found a box of my journals Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm like, I think I might need to burn some of these because I sound crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. I found a diary from like fourth grade and I about peed my pants laughing. It was so funny. It was so funny. And it was like, you know, back in elementary school, we call everybody by their first name and the first initial of their last name. Oh, yes. And we had like, you know, four Kyles in our class. And so I remember I would said something like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. And Kyle, he was so mean to me today. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so> <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, boy, wouldn't that be great if my only worry was how a, a, a certain Kyle treated me at school? Like, geez. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> oh, my dear, dear friend, I'm so happy that we had you on. And I, I really you know, Hannah and I's goal is to really get the word out there about your coaching business. And we just, we want to make a difference in hairstylists lives and mm -hmm. not on the technical side. I'm talking about on the wellness side, the emotional part of it that we don't focus on. Mm -hmm. And I know that's just, you know, that's definitely something that you want to change in our industry. And you know, for us to be a part of that in any small way, we will do whatever we can to help. Absolutely. Because you know what? Technology is something that is not going to take away from our job, thankfully. Yes. The world, the world is always going to need us. Yes. Um, and so I think with, you know, what is that saying? Like in all the superhero movies, you know, this, it's a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, this gift that we give people to help them feel better on the outside, but the inside as well. Yeah. So really honoring and respecting our world as a hairdresser, like really honoring what that means to people mm -hmm. and honoring ourselves and, and taking care of ourselves so we can do our job that much better. That's yeah. what it's all about. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, my dear, I hope you have an amazing day and get out and enjoy the sunshine. Hannah, what are you doing the rest of the day? Um, I was trying to find out if I could find Wi-Fi somewhere at a park so I could sit oh, outside. That's fantastic. I'm going to see if How I How about just sit outside without Wi-Fi? Well, just so, because I have to work. Yeah. Oh, you have to work. Okay. <laughs> there you go. But then I'll sit outside without working later, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, maybe, what about a coffee shop? Oh, yeah. Even just, you know. You know with a little patio. Sit, get some fresh air. It's oh, really Oh, my off. gosh. Yes. It's yes. supposed to be 70 on Sunday. What? I know. I know we're planning. It's so funny because Hannah, again, we're just 
so alike in so many ways. We had our leadership meeting on Sunday and she sends a text and she's like, how about our next one? We have it on a patio <laughs> with some drinkies. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, that's my girl. We're going to this, this Mexican restaurant that we love to go to. They have fantastic margaritas and wonderful food and a patio. We're all look at it this way. Turnout will be at an all time high if you do it that. Will. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No one will come up with a reason why they can't come to that meeting. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys having me on. And keep doing all the awesome things that you guys are doing. I love it. Well, thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.